Hi, I'm Tom Goki with Orthopedic Educational Services. Today we're going to talk about knee aspiration. I'm going to give you five tips that will help improve your technique in performing a knee aspiration. The first thing that I recommend that you do is to inspect the patient's skin. You want to make sure that they don't have an active infection over the area where you're going to perform your aspiration. If you notice an open sore, a draining wound, an insect bite, or they have a lot of uh, cellulitic change to the skin, you want to avoid introducing a needle through that skin. Potentially the bacteria associated with that skin infection could be introduced into the joint and cause a patient to have a joint infection that they may not already have. The second thing I like to do is to identify the bony landmarks around the patella before I carry out my knee aspiration. First, I'll identify the superior portion of the patella, the lateral patella, and the inferior pole of the patella. I also will identify the supralateral portal or portion of the patella, and then also as I palpate the quadriceps tendon, I'll identify that mark below the quadriceps tendon, and that'll be the point where I go to aspirate the joint. I also like to identify the joint line uh, as well. The third thing that I'll do is I'll anesthetize this supralateral arthroscopy portal region with either some marcaine or lidocaine. Before you do that, make sure you identify if the patient has any allergies to those medications. The anest to anesthetize that area will help to improve patient comfort and compliance and make it an overall better procedure for the patient. The fourth thing that I'd like to do, the fourth thing that I do is once I do aspirate fluid from that area, I always inspect the fluid for its color and texture. Uh, if it's a clear yellowy fluid, it's probably more synovial fluid. If it's dark and turbid or you notice there are fat droplet, droplets within the fluid, then I worry about infection or fracture. If you have any questions or concerns at all about the color of the fluid or if there's any infection, always send it off for further analysis. And then lastly, the last thing I do is I always give my patients a list of discharge instructions. This will help them to know what their weight bearing status is, what their activity level is, their do's and don'ts, and any other post-procedure -treat, post treatments they should follow. Also make sure on that sheet of paper that they have a phone number that they can call back with questions and concerns. All right, our question of the day. In performing a knee aspiration, what is, what is one of the most important things you should do before you aspirate someone's knee? If you know the answer to that question, go to our webpage, www.orthoedu.com, fill out the Contact Us section with your question, answer, and send it back to us. For Orthopedic Educational Services, I'm Tom Goki. Have a great PA week.